Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath to all of you. Welcome to our uh, Vesper service meeting. And uh, as you can see, our background, <laughs> it's uh, different now because uh, we are, we'll be having a wedding this coming uh, Sunday. All right. So before we uh, proceed, let us have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day that you have given to us. We invite the Holy Spirit to be in our midst as we worship you today or tonight. And uh, may we receive blessing from you. And we believe, Heavenly Father, that uh, you will take care of us. And uh, we will always see your grace and goodness to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, we are late for tonight because uh, we are doing something inside the church uh, this evening uh, for our uh, wedding and especially this coming uh, Sabbath or Saturday. May I invite you to uh, get your Bible and open it with me again to the book of uh, Matthew. And Matthew chapter 11. Okay, chapter 11 of Matthew. There's one <clears throat> famous passage here in the book of Matthew chapter 11. And it is found in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If you always read your Bible, you will see that Jesus Christ always uh, encountered this group of people called the uh, Pharisee. In the book of Matthew, in the book of John, and in the book of Luke, you will always see these people. Well, the Pharisees, uh, they believe in the resurrection and also uh, angels. Okay? And you can see this when Paul uh, mentioned this in the book of Acts chapter 23. So turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts chapter 23. And you will see the statement of Paul here about these Sadducees and uh, Pharisees. Chapter 23 of the book of Acts, beginning from verse 6. Now, when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. And when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge them all. So as you can see here, the difference between the Pharisees and Sadducees. The Pharisees believe in angel, resurrection, and spirit. But the Sadducees uh, do not believe those things. So, when Paul mentioned that, that the Pharisees believe in the resurrection, because he preached about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and compared that to the uh, encounter of Jesus Christ with these people, 
you will have a good background of this group. Okay? Not only that, the Pharisees, they were zealous about the law, especially the tradition of the elders. And you can always uh, see this interaction in the book of Mark chapter 7. Look at the book of Mark chapter 7, the interaction of Jesus Christ between himself and this group. Mark 7 verse 1. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. So another uh, important uh, information about the Pharisees, they, yes, they believe that there is resurrection, they believe in angels and the spirit, and they also uh, zealous about the tradition of the elders. Not only that, Another background for these uh, people, when you open your Bible to the book of Matthew 23, uh, verses 3 and 4. So, uh, let's start with verse 1 in Matthew 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So practice and observe whatever they tell you but not what they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They take up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their hard luck Theories broad and their fringes long, and they loved the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. So they love all these things. Uh, another important thing that Jesus Christ mentioned is this. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's soldiers, shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They were meticulous in outside things. Uh, when you go back to the book of Matthew or Mark chapter 7, go back again to the book of Mark chapter 7. Look at the statement of Jesus Christ about these uh, people. Verse 4, and when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. They were meticulous about these things. Okay? And then, and there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why do you disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders? but eat with defiled hands. So they were zealous about the law. They loved to tithe, okay? When you go back again to Matthew 23, they were zealous about the law. They were meticulous, meticulous about certain things. But Jesus Christ said in Matthew 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for your tithe mint and deal and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. So they love to do outward, you know, appearance as righteous, but they neglected the matters of the law, and that is justice, mercy, and faithfulness. And that is why, when you compare this gospel to the statement of Jesus Christ, in Matthew 11, okay, 28 to 30, this is the difference between this group and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ 
said to the people, Come to me, all who labor and have a laden, and I will give you rest. But the Pharisees, they love to put burdens on people's uh, shoulders. And, but they failed to help these people. But Jesus Christ said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when you compare Jesus Christ to this group, uh, you will see the difference and that is why uh, people love Jesus Christ more than these people, more than the Pharisees. Another example in the book of Matthew chapter 4, 23 to 24. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. So compare that to the ministry of the Pharisees, they failed to do that, but they love outward righteous appearance or appearances. They love to pray long in public places. They love the best seat according to uh, Jesus Christ. One example, again, when you compare that to the ministry of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 11, okay, 28 to 30, after saying that uh, I will give you rest, and then jump to chapter 12 of Matthew. This is the controversy about healing on the Sabbath. Look at the, uh, the response of these people in verse 2. Uh, let's start with verse 1. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do in the Sabbath. Okay? These uh, people, because they were the guardians of the law, of the Torah, the simple command of God about the Sabbath is what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But these people... They add more on that commandment just to keep the Sabbath holy. And one example, classic example is this. Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. For them, okay, for them, that uh, plucking of heads of grains on the Sabbath, for them, is not lawful. To do on the Sabbath. So when Jesus Christ encountered these people, these legalist uh, people, he gave them good answer in verse 5. Or you have not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless. I tell you something greater than the temple is here. And we have then known, and if you had Known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. And then verse 10, a man was there with withered hand, and they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, so that they might abuse him? So when they ask question, the real intention is to accuse Jesus Christ. Again, behind the mind of these people, it is not lawful to plot, according to chapter 12, uh, verse 1, it is not lawful to pluck heads of grain and to eat on the Sabbath. That is the commands, the additional commands in the Pharisees about the Sabbath. 
But Jesus Christ said, well, it is actually lawful to do good on the Sabbath. This is a classic example. They love to give more burdens on the people, but they fail to help and ease okay, the burdens of the people. Another classic example in the book of John. Turn your Bible to the book of John, chapter 5. John, chapter 5. You'll find in your Bible the healing at the pool on the Sabbath. And there was a man there in verse 5 who had been an invalid for how many years? 38 years. Can you imagine 38 years? This People, the Pharisees, did not do anything to help this man for 38 years. And then Jesus Christ, okay, that time said to him, verse 8, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. That taking his bed and, you know, walk. According to this story, again, for the Pharisees, that is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Look at verse 10. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. And this is the great controversy here in chapter 5. You can read up to chapter 8 and you will see the issue there. So, and that is why Jesus Christ uh, mentioned chapter 11 of Matthew, Come to me, all who labor and have a laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, or take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The invitation of Jesus Christ to come to him, all these people, those who are labor and are heavy laden, because he, Jesus Christ, will give them rest from these heavy burdens of the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders. And that is why when you encounter Jesus Christ and this group of people, especially about the Sabbath, the issue there is to accuse Jesus Christ of not uh, following the Sabbath command. But the, again, the response of Jesus Christ is always based on what? Justice, mercy, and righteousness. Right? He expands the real meaning of the Sabbath to his listeners. And when we choose Jesus Christ as the interpreter of the law, we can find rest. We can find rest. And we can actually lay all the burdens, our burdens to him. There's one uh, passage in the Old Testament. And for me, as we begin the Sabbath, okay, because tonight is a Vesper, uh, turn your Bible to the book of Psalm, Psalm 92. This is actually, when you look at your Bible, a psalm, a song for the Sabbath. So I will read this part because tonight is uh, Vesper. And you will see here why it is called a song for the Sabbath. Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work at the works of your hands, I sing for joy. What was the reason why 
It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to His name, to declare His steadfast love. Verse 4, it says, For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the, at the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your work, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know, the fool cannot understand this, that though the wicked sprout like grass, and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. This is a song for the Sabbath, and you will see. Uh, God is not only the creator, but he knows what is going on. Okay? Uh, especially those uh, evil people, they will be scattered. God will execute judgment on these people. But for the righteous, according to Verses 12 and 13, the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Because we acknowledge that our God is the creator of all things. So when you compare, again, this song of the Sabbath to the ministry of Jesus Christ truly, we can find rest. We can find rest in Jesus Christ. Compared to uh, the Pharisees. The Pharisees is more on the minutes of the law, the details of the law. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's ministry is different. He's more on, you know, getting the attention of people, his listeners, to have a personal relationship with the creator of the Sabbath. So when Jesus Christ explained these things, you know what? Uh, if people will just follow me, they will find rest. Right? Why I mention this? Because some people, when they read the uh, New Testament and they read something, uh, one example is in John 5. Take a look at John 5. I'll give you one example here. John 5. They have different understanding about the ministry of Jesus Christ. John 5, 18. This, is why, this was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So when some people read this part, they have this conclusion. See, that's why we now keep Sunday, because according to this passage, Jesus uh, broke the Sabbath. Right? But, when they, but if they just read the entire passage, one example here, uh, chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, let's start with verse 10. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. The same statement, verse 16. And this was why Jews, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. So John reported, okay, or penned down, or write down, the accusation of the Jews, okay, 
uh, as if John reported the accusation of the Jews that Jesus Christ uh, broke the Sabbath. But when you compare this to the other ministry of Jesus Christ, and another classic example is in uh, Matthew 12, you will see here another encounter of uh, Jesus Christ about these people. Verse 5, Or you have not read in chapter 12 of Matthew in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless. And then verse uh, 10, And a man was there with withered hand, and they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? What is the reason? So that they might accuse him. And then verse 12, oh, Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus' ministry is more on salvific ministry. But for the Pharisees, it is more on accusative ministry. Okay? That is the difference. So when you compare this ministry, we can find, okay, rest of our soul in Jesus Christ our Lord. Because He is Lord of the Sabbath. But it doesn't mean that Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. Some people say Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. Because Jesus Christ is the Sabbath, we can choose any day now. The day of worship and rest day. That is not the case. Jesus Christ was trying to explain the erroneous and distortions of uh, the explanation of the Pharisees compared to his explanation about these things. Now, in a spiritual sense, we can only find rest, not in religion. Because as you can see, the religion of the Pharisees, again, is based on what? The minutes of the law. They love to put burdens on people's shoulders, but they fail to help them. Classic example, in John chapter 5, a man was there who had been invalid for 38 years and they did do nothing. Jesus Christ on one occasion, that was Sabbath day, and he healed that man on that Sabbath. So they loved the minutes of the law, but they failed to do one thing, that is mercy. Being merciful to other people. Yes, in the spiritual sense, when we accept Jesus Christ as our friend, as our Lord, and as our Savior, according to Him, we can find rest from our soul. Rest from sins, rest from heavy burdens of life, because truly He is Lord of the Sabbath. So don't forget, if you want to, let's say, open your Sabbath, okay, Friday night, you read the book of Psalm 92, that is one uh, song of the Sabbath, song, song for Sabbath, or Psalm 100, or Psalm 105, just a one reading the whole chapter to begin the Sabbath day. So again, you can find rest when you trust Jesus Christ. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, that we open the Sabbath day with the ministry of Jesus Christ that uh, he mentioned that we can find rest in him and not only find rest but we can lay everything unto him not only the physical burden but also the burden of our soul the burden of sin the burden of this worldly uh, endeavors we can lay it on him these heavy burdens in our hearts Thank you, Heavenly Father, that tonight we can find rest, not only the Sabbath rest, but also the rest of our souls. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.